yeah, wake up call. So we spent a lot of time in the river swimming. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's hot furs and I pulled through and her candles got her right in the braces. So with 2k or so to go, they told us we had 500 meters left. So that part kind of dragged on a little bit long. Did a lot of triathlon actually. Mostly volleyball and ringette. Um, mm -hmm. I played volleyball for the UW. I started with water polo and that was my thing. And then played ringette for Team Manitoba for a few years as well. So. Trained with the Manitoba National Triathlon Center and I raced a competitive junior league triathlon for a number of years. I joined competitive swimming and I was a like, two sport athlete at that time. Yeah, we both did yeah, yeah. that. That was our thing. Yeah. She went to Canada Winter Games with Ringette. And then as I kind of came to the end of my junior eligibility in triathlon, I was looking for some other things to try, and then that's kind of where rowing came along. My dad signed me up for one of the summer camps the previous year. And I don't remember actually wanting to go, but I did. And ended up doing it. Based on me being taller than most of the little triathletes I was running around with, uh, he suggested I give it a try. I, I felt like I needed something else. So my mom found rowing and signed Tyrone and I up for a summer camp. Googled rowing. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> we didn't even know there was a rowing yeah, camp we, in Winnipeg. Yeah. And then also, yeah, it like came up and we were like all excited. We were like, oh, there's rowing in Winnipeg. Like, I've been doing hockey forever and wanted to try something else. And definitely ended up in the water the first time we did. I was also lucky enough to have Andrew Lamont put up with me for a few times in the, in the early days of my rowing. And are you looking to try a new sport? Are you like in your 20s? Are you tall? Are you athletic? And we're are like, you we're all these are things. You competitive? Are you competitive? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we kind of just like, we're like, that's us. And yeah. then got in contact with the road podium people. The movement was fun and it was so pretty and I couldn't believe, it was the first time in my life that I thought of Winnipeg as a beautiful place. So a typical day would probably be, usually wake up around 5.30. On the water at 5.30 too. Mm -hmm. So it was like, hop on my bike at yeah. 4.45. Either make a smoothie or throw some toast in the toaster and slap some peanut butter and jam on there and head down to the rowing club. Practice food, work, food, row, food, yeah. work, leave at but we'll write before work, it'll be call my mom and ask to bring me. <laughs> yeah. uh, usually we have an erg workout uh, on the rowing machine in the morning. Sometimes we do uh, a bike or our coach is at us doing some skipping as well, which is a, a new challenge, not something I'm very good at at all. Each of us was working because yeah. it would be some days, you know, I would be doing camps yeah. in the morning and you'd do camps in the afternoon and yeah. then we would try and like sneak out at lunch and go for a <laughs> row. And the first time we went out in a double, it was, we didn't have a coach that practice, yeah. which ended up being a disaster. So with the warm up and cool down, we usually here for about two hours in the morning, uh, try and get some food in me after that. And and to the blood, uneven. Yeah. But we were we disagreed about which side we thought I the thought it was, was tilting needed. one way, yeah, she thought, I thought the other. other. And we both thought it was the other person who was making yeah. it tilt. So we were kind of yelling at each other. It, it was so it was like, bad. It was yeah. so bad. I have no idea. First day in the quad, it was, how in the world is this going to happen? Each evening we either have a core workout or a weightlifting workout, so either a mix of squats and deadlifts and those kind of things, which are key workouts for, or key exercises for strength and rowing, or uh, working on the core strength and stability as well. Yeah, we were about 6 we're like kilometers. 6K from the rowing club, mad at each other, <laughs> and then we are like, okay, we can't do this, so we like, Apologize, and we're all good, and then we like start rowing again. Like, it's horrible to be pretty good, and it's such a short period of time. Because I remember every single practice, like every time we went on the water, getting like that much better. Yeah, 
which was super nice because but... yeah but then we'd stop and apologize and it was a bit <laughs> yeah. of a cycle yeah but so yeah. good time it's good to have a coach on the water with us. yeah <laughs> that's what we're getting at yeah. <laughs> and we're learning like patience yeah with each other. we have grown a lot i think yeah <laughs> and then uh try and get home and do some studying eat as much food as i can and go to bed to go home uh, get ready to do it all over again Before the race, I asked my coach, I was like, what happens if I flip my boat? And he's like, you're not going to flip your boat. And I was like, but what happens if I flip my boat? And he's like, you're not going to flip your boat. And sure enough, I flipped my boat. So, but the lady at first aid was like super nice. She like gave me a big hug and like, she's like, there will be many more races. And I was like, thankful for that perspective. So to start go, I quick start lunch and she didn't. <laughs> so my oars caught hers and I pulled through. and. Her handles got her right in the braces, <laughs> and she was crying. <laughs> Halfway down the course, the parts of one of the riggers started coming off, and uh, may have lost a few nuts and bolts into the lake in Burnaby, but uh, that was definitely a little bit of a challenge. It was a pretty frustrating race. Uh, it was long. It felt really long. Two kilometers yeah. doesn't seem that long, but it actually is the longest thing ever so no it was good though yeah seeing Kellen in the water kind of terrified me a little bit but I finished yeah you learn a lot I think from every race so yeah. that race taught me that rowing is hard and I think every race teaches you that yeah. last year at the national rowing championships uh, was really the first time that I really felt like I was competitive and in a lot of the races and was able to really push through in the single and uh, had some really, lots of the races came down to the last 200 meters and lots of good sprints and close finishes there. Uh, as well, racing at the Northwest a couple of years ago, which is our big uh, kind of regional rowing association championship. Uh, there was, it was lots of fun racing with uh, some of the more experienced members of the club and uh, even had a Olympian Jeff Powell stroking our eight that year and uh, racing six different races over the two days made for lots of fun as well. Race. I just remember winning. <laughs> uh, recall my mom saying that we were kind of cruising and then we called the, we called the sprint at the end anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it was two bullets. Two bullets. Two bullets. Two bullets. Some open good. water. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's alright. Three would have been better. It's our first time racing it together. Bullet. Yeah. And yeah, in the heat, it was actually really funny because we we started and we kind of got out ahead right away. So and we're like, yeah, and we were surprised. No race, we didn't we'd never raced a double before. And then it was pretty funny because I, I caught a crab. So that's when your oar sort of takes deep. Like was, halfway through the so race. So we came to a complete like a dead, dead stop. stop. <laughs> and then we just. In the middle of the race. Like, okay, got back together <laughs> and did another stop. <laughs> and we still finished. Yeah, and we, it was pretty first funny. Because because challenged ourselves and then, and then we did at Henley yeah. and the challenge was really good and it's yeah I find like this year that the feat of last year is kind of what's motivating me for this upcoming like this year mm -hmm. and yeah I want to go back and do better show <laughs> yeah show the new 23 scene what we think it's really all about <laughs> <laughs> I hope to graduate from school after next year, so in the spring of 2016, and then uh, try to head out to Victoria, which is where the men's national team training center is, um, and take a take a shot at uh, trying to make my way onto the national team and earn a earn a seat in a boat at a national or a world championships or uh, Olympic games down the road. That would be the, the A plan for the future in rowing. Like from the first day we came here, like we did fitness testing, and I think when someone tells you you have potential to be national team, like that just fires you up. Like why would you not? Right, harness that and go. Yeah. And I think like even like to have that goal is pretty incredible, and like um, to not 
go for it would be crazy. And even if we don't achieve that, yeah. like, why? Would, like, we'll never know if we don't try. Yeah, like the ultimate goal so. is Olympics Tokyo 2020. But you know, if we if we don't get there, like, it's like it's about the journey, right? The like, journey so far has been so yeah, incredible that, yeah. like. But we're gonna try very hard. To get yeah, there, but, but. <laughs> like that's what we really want. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we love the sport, so yeah, it's kind of a win-win for us. Yeah.